sebab tomorrow you have your UPS, so I don't want to disturb your UPS on that. Yeah, so let your friend know that they won't be letting go just like that easy. Ingat tak masuk kuliah saya best? Betul siapa? Siapa yang duduk gelap? Alright, uh, so today, <coughs> you'll be going into your gas, you'll be finishing off with your uh, liquid. Gas ada sikit saya nak bincang, about 20 minutes, and then the rest of it, kita akan habiskan liquid. And as always, dalam slide, saya tak ada banyak perkataan. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Saya tak ada banyak perkataan explanation, explanation, explanation semua ada atas nota. So tengok sendirilah atas nota tu. Okay. Kat sini saya akan more on explaining what is mean and the factor yang penting-penting sahaja. So ayat penuh-penuh macam biasa atas nota. So we are going to talk about ideal gas and also non-ideal gas. Another name untuk non-ideal gas adalah kita panggil real gas most of the time. Okay. And... <coughs> What's wrong? <coughs> ideal gas, kita akan banyak guna formula ideal gas equation PV equals to NRT that we will talk about later on. Okay? So in the real gas or the non-ideal gas, we will be using Van der Waals equation. Good news. Van der Waals equation yang kamu tengok dalam nota yang panjang gila tak gaban ada N, ada A, ada B, apa benda mana ni semua tu tak ada calculation. Alright. Kamu hanya perlu boleh explain kenapa Van der Waals equation like that. So don't worry. Memang tak ada explanation, tak ada calculation. So uh, don't worry about all the long formula. Okay. So talking about ideal gas and real gas. Most of the time, ideal is like the ideal man that you want in your life, Nadira. All right? You know, your white horse with your white prince and that thing doesn't exist. Okay? Your sim is smiling. Yes, your ideal man is hardly exist, you know? All right? So the ideal gas over here will only exist because of the two conditions, the low pressure and the high temperature that we have discussed. But most of the gas will actually behave in real gas. Semua formula yang kita belajar last week, your Dalton's law, your Charles law, Boyce's law, Avogadro's law, adalah apply untuk ideal gas. So what are we doing right now in this chapter is we assume all of them are ideal gas. But in fact, Reality, kita assume semua K-pop tu, you know, your BTS team and everything, oh, they look great, man. They are looking ideal, but they are not ideal in real. Okay? So, most of the gas adalah real gas. Dan dalam real gas, keadaan dia terbalik. Apa yang saya nak kamu tengok kat sini, keadaan dia terbalik. Kalau ideal, dia adalah low pressure. Kalau real, dia adalah high pressure. 100% terbalik. Kalau ideal gas, kita kena ada high temperature. Kalau real gas, dia kena low temperature. Nampak? Okay. And this thing dapat tunjuk kat graph. Kat graph ni tak ada apa nak tunjuk satu benda je. This is our real ideal gas. Pressure, satu ATM, that is your ideal gas. So ideal gas, semua ideal gas akan behave like that. But in fact, in reality... In reality, the real gas, real gas yang kita ada contoh, hydrogen gas, ammonia gas, methane gas. This real gas, bila duduk pada low temperature, uh, low pressure, looking at this, that is my pressure guys. When the pressure is low, kosong sehingga permulaan tersebut, you can see that your ideal over here, semua orang agak dekat dengan ideal gas pada sini. Where the pressure is very low. Pressure almost approximately kosong. When the pressure is very low, the real gas, all right, will be very close with your ideal. Betul. Tetapi cuba tengok bila dia start bergerak kepada high pressure. Sebab kita tahu real gas akan wujud bila tekanan tinggi. So cuba kita tengok bila dia start bergerak kepada tekanan tinggi, guys. Bila dia start bergerak kepada tekanan tinggi, pressure increase over here. So, kita tengok hujung teruslah. Kita tengok hujung terus, senang. Kita tengok kat sini. 
Bila tekanan kita tengah tinggi, pressure 1000 atm, tekanan dah tinggi, kamu akan nampak all your gases over here guys will be very far. Your real gas will be very far from your ideal gas. Nampak? And this graph sebenarnya kita guna untuk membuktikan that your real gas will deviate means it will be moving far from the ideal gas. Dia akan behave non-ideally when the pressure is very high. Okay, this is using the graph. Next, we want to use what we explained last week. Remember kinetic molecular theory? All right, when your gas move fast, when we talk about kinetic uh, energy, when we talk about bila kita tekan, particles duduk dekat, betul? Saya seguna yang tu kamu akan nampak sikit. So, kita tengok idea dulu. Sayang, kita tengok idea dulu. Ideal gas adalah apabila dia low pressure last week. So, bila dia adalah low pressure over here, your gas particles, all right, we are still talking about gas, so dia masih adalah gas. Gas particle will be far apart. Betul? Okay. Bila dia far apart, what happen? Empty spaces akan jadi tinggi. Agree? Okay. Dan sayang, bila empty spaces jadi tinggi kat sini, we agree on last week one thing. Volume of the gas particle become negligible. Setiap satu biji ini, compare dengan the volume of this big size, the volume of the gas particle become negligible. Ingat tak cerita saya kata kita ada stadium besar? Stadium Manchester United whatsoever and then kamu duduk seorang kat tengah. So kehadiran kamu dalam stadium besar tu akan jadi tak penting. Betul? Alright? That is what happened in the ideal. Where the volume of the gas particle become negligible. I hope you remember this. Okay? And then the next one adalah apabila dia high temperature. When the temperature is very high over here, again, what happened is kinetic energy is very high. Bila kinetic energy is very high, what happened? Kita move very fast. Betul? Alright, saya panaskan dia. Cuba kalau saya letak lilin bawah kursi hang sekarang. Alright, apa yang kamu buat, kamu start berlari ya. Betul? So, when your kinetic energy is very high, you tend to move very fast. And I hope you remember when you tend to move very fast, the intermolecular forces between the particles become negligible. Bila saya ada tenaga yang sangat tinggi, saya boleh bergerak sangat-sangat laju dan tak ada kawan yang boleh tarik saya. So, intermolecular forces, daya tarikan antara kawan saya dengan saya akan jadi sangat-sangat lemah sehingga hampir tak ada. Sebab tu saya boleh bergerak laju. Sebab tu saya boleh bergerak non-stop, continuously, high kinetic energy. Agree so far? Okay, and this thing is perfect because it's ideal. Alright, it's what we learn about gas. Gas kena bergerak laju, gas kena bergerak non-stop, gas kena bergerak memenuhi ruang. This is what we learn. But in fact, alright, the reality is always very harsh. Contohnya yang tak masuk kelas saya hari ni kena ambil quiz. That is the reality. So when the reality hit you, which is the real gas. Saya tak boleh bagi tahu semalam. Bila saya bagi tahu semalam, orang semua akan masuk kelas. Dengan hanya masuk tapi tak dengar lah. You know, just log in, I know you. Alright, so saya bagi tahu hari ni. I have my trick too. What happened is high pressure. Kita tahu dalam dunia ni sayang, kita takkan ada sentiasa low pressure. Betul? Kita ada keadaan di mana my pressure tend to be very high right now. So when my pressure is very high guys, benda ni dah tak ada dah. My gas particle will be close to each other. Alright? Bila tekanan saya tinggi, my gas particle will be close, closer to each other. Dan bila closer to each other guys, empty spaces become lower. Empty spaces become very small. Betul? So, bila empty spaces become very small, sayang, bayangkan sekarang saya ada 100 orang, kita duduk kat Padang Manchester United tadi kat Ideal. So, 100 orang, budak kuliah saya semua saya bawa ke UK, kita pergi kat MU. Okay, saya gurau je sayang, we are not going anywhere. Okay? So, 100 of us located in the big stadium. The presence of us in the big stadium is nothing. Tapi cuba kalau 100 orang yang sama, saya bawa kepada bilik tutorial KMPP. Yang kecil tak berdaban, yang panas tak tergipas tu. 
So kehadiran kamu, 100 orang dalam bilik kecil tu akan jadi significant. Sebab bila high pressure, we know that the volume decrease. The volume of the container. So bila volume of the container decrease, tapi gas particle sama banyak. So bila gas particle sama banyak, the gas particle will occupy and have volume. Alright, kehadiran dia takkan jadi negligible. Kehadiran dia dalam bilik yang kecil tu akan jadi significant. So kita tak boleh kata, oh dia tak ada volume. Dia akan jadi ada volume sebab container saya sekarang daripada besar dah jadi kecil. So titik-titik dalam tu akan mengambil ruang dan mengambil tempat container tersebut. Setuju? Okay. And then next, what happened? Bila dia low pressure. Bila dia low pressure, tekan, uh, sorry, api saya kecil. Bila api saya kecil, tenaga saya rendah. Kinetic energy kita rendah. Dan saya, kalau kinetic energy tinggi, kita bergerak laju. Kinetic energy rendah, we move very slow. Dan bila kamu bergerak lambat, just imagine particle kamu sekarang tengah bergerak lambat. So, bila dia bergerak lambat, dia akan tend to mengikut kereta. Saya bagi satu logik, satu contoh yang sangat senang. Highway yang tak ada kereta dengan highway yang ada kereta tengah jam. Kalau highway yang tak ada kereta, hang boleh bawa kereta ikut aku lah. Aku nak bawa laju mana? Betul. That is the ideal. Tapi the reality hits you very hard. Because highway kita bayar mahal macam mana pun dia jam juga. Alright, that is the reality. Saya balik kampung last week. It's a disaster. I stuck in the jam very badly. So, bila kamu tengah jam, Alright, bila semua orang tengah bergerak slow, kinetic energy sangat rendah, what happen is, hang terpaksa follow je lah kereta kat depan tu. Betul? Dan bila kamu follow dan kamu duduk dekat saya, yang paling penting, bila kamu follow volume kamu rendah, kamu duduk dekat, what happen is, your intermolecular forces become significant. Kenapa dia jadi significant? Sebab saya terpaksa duduk dekat dengan kawan saya. Saya tak nak pun duduk dekat tapi saya terpaksa duduk dekat. Dan bila kamu dah start duduk dekat, daya tarikan yang tadi tak obvious akan jadi obvious. Kamu akan nampak macam tertarik. Saya tak nak pun ikut kereta depan saya tu tapi saya terpaksa ikut sebab tak ada ruang, tak ada space. Betul? Dan saya duduk dekat dah dengan dia. So kamu terpaksa ikut. So you have your intermolecular forces. And I hope you can see this much easier than the graph just now. This is what happened. Kenapa dalam ideal gas, we need badly on the low pressure and high temperature for the ideal, for the gas to behave ideally. But when the gas behave real, is the high pressure and low temperature. Nampak? Semua benda cerita konsep yang sama. Duduk dekat atau duduk jauh, bergerak laju atau bergerak lambat. Itu yang akan menyebabkan volume dia jadi signifikan atau tidak. Dia akan menjadikan benda tu akan ada intermolecular forces atau tidak. Happy with that? Okay. That is your idea guys and real guys. Agree on that? Okay. Kena agree on this dulu sebelum kita bergerak ke next. So, this is what we are going to talk about. Kita akan guna, we are, you are going to use this in your uh, tutorial. You'll be using this a lot in your tutorial. Okay, kita akan guna yang ni untuk calculation. Tapi yang ni kita takkan guna untuk calculation. Kita hanya perlu tahu. So, your idea gas datang dari uh, idea gas akan menggunakan your idea gas equation while your real gas will be using your Van der Waals equation. Looking at the differences, you realize that the differences lies on the pressure ada tambahan, the volume kena tolak something. They are actually from this. I don't know whether you realize or not, they are actually from the same formula. Nampak? Dia sebenarnya daripada PV equals to NRT but we do correction. So what are we going to learn is why are we doing this correction? Yang tu je kamu kena tahu. Kenapa kena ada pakcik ni? Kenapa kena ada pakcik ni? What do they represent? What correction do they represent? By the way, I got my new haircut. Yang tu penting. Right, Nadira? Do I still look good? Alright. Do I look more garang? That's the purpose, isn't it? Tak adalah sayang, saya gurau je. Tak pernah, tak, tak pernah nampak garang, Nadira? Lying. 
Okay, kita akan cerita satu-satu. Kita akan cerita satu-satu. For the first and foremost, saya nak cerita bahagian ni dulu. Perubahan yang berlaku pada pressure. First thing yang kita nak cerita. Bila perubahan yang berlaku pada pressure, mesti berkaitan dengan pressure lah saya. When the changes happen to the factor of pressure, definitely because of the pressure. Cerita balik pressure tadi. If you remember, this is where the pressure is low. This is where the pressure is high. Guna perkataan lah, senang sikit. Okay, semua guna arrow saya yang pening. Alright. So, if you remember what we talk about just now, is benda ni will be far apart. Okay. Bila dia far apart, space akan jadi tinggi. Empty spaces akan jadi tinggi. And so, over here, wait. Pressure, space jadi tinggi. Intermolecular forces. Ya, yeah, nak cerita intermolecular forces. So, over here, bila far apart, space jadi tinggi. The intermolecular forces akan jadi lemah. Intermolecular forces. Forces. Jadi weak. Okay. Alright. Kenapa intermolecular jadi force, uh, intermolecular forces jadi weak? Because I'm sitting far apart from each other. When I'm sitting far apart from each other, and I keep moving, of course, and I have a lot of empty spaces in between, therefore, my intermolecular forces akan jadi lemah, Ataupun not significant. Terus not significant. Senang. Bukan setakat lemah. Dia almost tak wujud. Okay. Vice versa. The same thing apply on the vice versa is this thing. Closer to each other. Bila dia closer, empty spaces decrease. Dan bila empty spaces decrease guys, the intermolecular forces intermolecular forces, daya tarikan antara benda tu akan jadi obvious. Akan jadi significant. Betul? Okay. Dan bila jadi significant, tekanan kat sini akan jadi lebih. Tekanan kat sini, the pressure produce uh, sorry. The pressure produce will be higher. Betul? Alright. Sebab uh, intermolecular forces saya jadi significant. So, tekanan saya akan jadi obvious kat situ. Bila tekanan saya jadi obvious kat situ, that is the reason why we have that correction. And correction kita adalah, kita perlu tambah balik yang kurang tadi. Kenapa perlu tambah balik? I hope you remember that this is the ideal. Betul? Alright, this is the ideal, sorry. Pressure, daya tarikan tinggi so dia terikat. Bila dia terikat, bila dia terikat, sorry, pressure jadi rendah. Set, set, set. Closer empty spaces kurang, intermolecular forces jadi significant. Yes, sebab dia terikat kan? So, of course, intermolecular forces akan jadi ter, uh, significant. So, bila intermolecular forces jadi significant, Pressure kena cerita pasal volume. Sorry guys. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Sorry. Patutlah saya rasa pelik. One second. Restart. Set. One second, one second. Pressure tadi saya cerita pasal empty spaces. Volume. Got sick man. And nobody correct me because you don't understand. Got sick. Kita kan tadi duk cerita pressure and then kita relate dengan volume kan? Kenapa saya nak relate dengan ni? Ah, tak, 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 tak. No, 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 no. No, sorry, sorry, sorry. My bad. Definitely. Volume, volume. Reset, reset. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Pada balik. Sorry. Sorry. Definitely my bad. Sorry. Macam eh? Volume. Yeah. Volume over here. Okay. Hi. 
Sorry. One second. Back. Everything. Reset. Sorry. Okay. Over here. Pressure. For the ideal, the pressure is low. So, when the pressure is low, you can see that macam tadi, sama macam tadi, cuma kat hujung tu saya tersilap sikit. Ah, oh, tak saya tak tahu kerja apa. Over here, the gas particles. Okay. Will be far from each other. Far apart. Bila dia far apart, we agree on empty spaces jadi tinggi. Bila empty spaces jadi tinggi, macam yang kita bincang tadi. Betul lah. Alright, yang kita bincang tadi. Volume of the gas particles is negligible. Gas particles is not significant. Betul? Alright. Dia akan jadi macam ni. This is the volume of the ideal gas di mana dia orang duduk jauh antara satu sama lain. So, dia akan memenuhi ruang tersebut. Bila dia memenuhi ruang tersebut, kehadiran dia akan tidak memainkan perahanan terhadap ruang tersebut. Sebab dia duduk jauh-jauh. Betul? Dia nampak macam tak penuh pun. Okay? So, next, what happen is when in the real. So, what happen in the real is your pressure become extremely high. When your pressure become extremely high, your gas particles become extremely close to each other. When they do not the can, empty spaces automatically, you can see from the diagram itself, empty spaces automatically decrease. Bila dia duduk dekat, so the volume of the gas particles become significant. All right? And what happened is like this. Container saya tetap besar. Tapi disebabkan low pressure, sorry, disebabkan high pressure, so gas saya akan ditekan dan duduk dekat. Alright, kamu nak nampak kat sini? Bila saya ditekan, tekanan saya tinggi, pressure saya tinggi, so gas saya ditekan, and then gas saya akan duduk satu tempat kat bawah. So kita akan nampak ada volume of the gas. Okay, kita ada volume of the gas. In the ideal gas, in the ideal gas, the volume of the container, okay, the V over here is the volume of your container, will be equals to the volume of gas. Sebab apa? Sebab dia akan memenuhi ruang. Nampak tak dia memenuhi ruang? Okay. Betul. Sebab gas akan duduk penuh kat situ. But what happened in here is your volume of the container over here, the V, Volume of the container adalah tinggi ni. Volume of the container tinggal banyak ni. But your gas will occupy it. That is your real gas. The volume of your real gas. Okay. So, the container yang besar, the total of this container, the total of this container, the total yang penuh dari atas sampai bawah, dia kena tolak dengan kehadiran real gas tersebut. Dia kena tolak kawasan ni. Sebab saya hanya nak volume of container. Nampak? Kenapa dia jadi tolak NV? Sebab this one is the volume of container. This is the volume of the real gas yang kita ambil. Alright? So the volume of the entire container, the volume besar ni, kena tolak dengan volume of the real gas untuk dapat balik volume of container. The reason is because when you apply pressure, they tend to be very close to each other. When they close to each other, the volume of the gas becomes significant. Seperti yang kamu setuju tadi. Okay? And this one come to a conclusion, guys. The volume of the container will not equal to the volume of the gas. Nampak tak? This one and this one. Dia takkan memenuhi ruang of the entire container. Yang ni betul. I'm so sorry just now. I am thinking the second thing already. So I moved to the second thing already. I'm so sorry. Okay. Nampak? Okay. And then I want to add in a bit. Uh, yang ni kita akan tengok kat slide satu lagi. Uh, tak apa kita tengok kat slide satu lagi. Setakat ni setuju. Kenapa dia kena tolak? Sebab dia dah duduk dekat. This is the correction that we made because of high pressure. Okay. Uh, yes, question? Um, volume of container, is it the empty spaces or it, uh, is, is it including the gas particle? Okay, the volume of the original container is the whole thing. Two, two type over here. 
the volume of the original container is the whole box. Okay, the whole thing over here. Okay, but the volume that we want is the volume of the empty spaces, the volume of this. Okay, volume of the empty area. That's why you need to minus out the gas. We want this. Okay, we want you. this. Yeah. Okay, is that clear? That's why you need to minus out the volume of the gas. Okay, sebab kita nak volume of the container. So, kita nak tinggal container tu tinggal banyak mana lah. So, saya kena tolak. Yang original tu kena tolak lah kawasan yang gas ambil. So, saya tinggal balik volume of the container. Okay. Boleh. Alright. And the main difference between your ideal gas and your real gas, guys. Your ideal gas, volume of the container kena sama dengan volume of gas sebab dia akan memenuhi ruang. As we agree, dia akan bergerak laju, dia bergerak far apart, dia akan penuh ruang tersebut. Tapi in reality, your gas doesn't occupy the whole container. So the volume of the container will not equal to the volume of gas in real gas. Okay? In real gas. Saya nak ingatkan sekali lagi, semua Charles Law, Avogadro's Law, Boyce Law, kita guna ideal gas. Sebab tu dalam Boyce Law, Charles Law, Avogadro's Law, the volume of container is equal to the volume of gas in your tutorial later on. Okay? So, saya nak ingatkan satu lagi, semua gas law adalah menggunakan ideal gas equation punya konsep. Okay? Kita nak, be, kita sekarang kita nak belajar apa beza real gas sahaja. Okay? And in the pressure, yang volume tadi kita discuss by using the pressure. Volume tadi kita discuss by using the factor of pressure. For the pressure over here, we discuss by using the factor of temperature. Okay? So, why we have these changes? Why do we have these changes? We are going to look at the explanation by using the temperature. So, over here in ideal gas, we know that your temperature is extremely high. You can see from the API. And in the real, the temperature is extremely low. We go one by one. Okay, we go for the real ideal first. Bila temperature tinggi, seperti biasa, kinetic energy sangat tinggi. Betul? Kita tahulah, bila temperature increase, kinetic energy akan jadi sangat tinggi. Bila kinetic energy sangat tinggi, they will be moving extremely fast. Okay, extremely fast and far. Sebab saya kuat, saya banyak tenaga, saya bergerak laju lah. Dan bila saya bergerak laju, what happen is intermolecular forces. Intermolecular forces become negligible. Intermolecular forces become not significant. Negligible. Okay? So, dia akan jadi not significant kat sini. Setuju? Okay? Dan bila intermolecular forces become not significant over here, uh, the ideal gas pressure will be extremely high. Kenapa ideal gas pressure will be extremely high? Sebab bila dia bergerak dengan laju, dia akan ada collision. Collision akan jadi sangat tinggi. Betul? Alright. Bila dia boleh ada collision sangat tinggi, pressure yang dihasilkan masa collision akan jadi tinggi. Badak in mind, gas saya boleh bergerak laju. Eh? Gas kita bergerak laju gila ni. Gas bergerak laju, tak ada daya tarikan. Tak ada siapa tarik saya. So, saya apa lagi? Saya langgar je lah. Semua benda ni saya nampak. Betul? Dan bila kamu berlanggar, kamu hasilkan tekanan. So, tekanan kita jadi tinggi kat sini. Setuju? Okay. Kalau setuju, berhenti kat situ dulu. Kita bergerak kepada your real. What happen in your real? Tekat temperature rendah. Tenaga yang kita bagi pun tak tinggi. So, kinetic energy pun rendah. Bila kinetic energy rendah, automatically kita bergerak pun slow. Bergerak very slow. Bila bergerak very slow, daya tarikan intermolecular forces become very significant. Alright? Become significant. Bila daya tarikan become significant, what happen? Alright? Collision jadi rendah. Betul? Bila collision jadi rendah, sayang. Satu, before before kita bincang kenapa uh, lepas collision jadi rendah tu uh, jadi apa. Sayang, bila kinetic energy saya rendah, saya ditarik oleh kawan, saya bergerak sebagai satu kumpulan besar yang berat dan lambat. 
Bayangkan Han bergerak lambat. Han drive kereta. Bergerak laju dengan bergerak lambat. Bila ada accident, mana tombol? Yang laju lah. Betul? Alright. Pressure lagi tinggi. So, bila yang ni kinetic energy rendah, bergerak pun lambat, ditarik dengan kawan sekumpulan besar, bergerak lagi lambat, collision pun jadi rendah. Kenapa jadi collision jadi rendah? Semua orang dah duduk satu gang. Han nak langgang dengan siapa? Betul? Bila semua orang dah duduk satu gang, collision jadi rendah, bergerak pun lambat, so pressure yang dihasilkan jadi rendah. Betul? Bila tekanan yang dihasilkan jadi rendah, that's why you come to a conclusion over here, compare the pressure of your ideal gas will be higher than the pressure of your real gas. Setuju? Okay. Alright. When the pressure of your ideal gas is low, uh, is higher than the pressure of the real gas, kita tengok pada correction tersebut. Your correction over here, pressure, pressure, okay. Your pressure over here is the pressure original, katakan pressure of the uh, of the ideal gas, of course. This is the pressure. Jumlah kat sini, alright, jumlah total kat sini kena sama dengan jumlah dia. Kena sama dengan P kat ideal. Okay. So this is the pressure of the real. Dan kita tahu pressure of the real rendah, betul? Bila pressure of the real rendah, tapi total kena sama dengan idea nanti, so apa yang kita kena buat? Kita kena tambah dengan correction tersebut. Alright? Kita kena tambah dengan correction tersebut. Correction ini adalah apa? A ini adalah apa? Correction ni adalah intermolecular forces. Kenapa kena tambah dengan correction by using intermolecular forces? Siapa yang menyebabkan daya tarikan, sorry, siapa yang menyebabkan tekanan saya rendah? Orang yang menyebabkan tekanan saya rendah adalah intermolecular forces. Bila saya ditarik oleh kawan saya, saya terpaksa bergerak lambat, saya terpaksa ada pelanggaran yang kurang, I move slow, I have low collision because of my strong intermolecular forces. So, saya kena tambah balik dengan correction of the intermolecular forces. Okay? That's why you have this co uh, correction. The total over here is the total of the ideal. So this is the real. This is the real. Okay? So the real lebih rendah. Bila the real lebih rendah, dia kena tambah balik something untuk sama balik dengan ideal. So dia tambah apa? Dia tambah the factor of intermolecular forces. The correction kita panggil. Alright? The correction that you do. Boleh. Okay. So, ada dua benda kat sini. The pressure, kalau kamu nak bincang pressure, kita akan bincang effect of temperature. Ingat yang ni. Alright. Effect of temperature that lead to intermolecular forces. Okay. Nampak? Volume. Wise versa. Volume, volume over here. Volume, kita akan bincang factor of pressure. And the factor of pressure akan lead to apa? Akan lead to the volume. Volume uh, of, okay? The volume of the container. Nampak? Okay? So, over here again, tak ada calculation. We are not going to do calculation. What we are going to do is only explain what I explained just now. Okay? Kena ingat kalau pressure, saya kena uh, explain guna factor apa. Kalau volume, saya kena explain guna uh, factor apa. So, what is the main factor or what is the correction that we made? A over here. Your A over here is the constant for the intermolecular forces. So, the larger the A, the stronger the attraction. Sebab tu lagi banyak correction yang kamu buat lah. And then the B over here is the, B over here is the volume of the particle. So the larger the volume, the larger the B. Again, the larger the correction that you do. Okay? Tapi the first thing that you need to think about, remember the four things, the variables, the temperature, pressure, volume, number of mole. So dalam empat tu, siapa yang kita akan guna untuk bincang? 
Untuk bincang pressure, kita kena guna temperature. Untuk bincang volume, kita guna, kena guna pressure. Itu sahaja. Boleh? Okay. I am so sorry for the mistake that I made just now at the very beginning. At this moment, soalan? Boleh ke? Alright. Yes. Auni? Auni? Ah, oh, sorry. Please, you buka. Okay. Lagi? Boleh? Balik digest sikit kalau nanti tak faham uh, tengok balik video tu. Uh, benda ni take times untuk digest. Tapi satu je saya nak ingatkan. Bila gas kamu terbalik dengan ideal, bila gas kamu tak behave ideally as what you expect. Sebab tu kita buat correction. Okay? Alright, ingat yang tu. Bukan semua gas akan behave ideally. Bukan semua benda dalam dunia ni behave as what it should. Everybody should get A in my class. But teach you. Okay? That is ideal. Ideally, everybody should get A. Were you? Right, Mira? Ideally. I think I teach everything I can, betul, Mira? So, ideally, everybody should get A, right, Mira? Hmm, Mira say yes. So, I suppose it is. Okay, and that is the last part of the guess. Okay, that is the last part of the guess. Antara soalan favorite yang dia suka keluar untuk explanation. Sebab in the entire chapter, everything is about explanation kecuali dalam guess ada calculation. So, dalam guess yang dia suka minta explain, dia jarang minta explain voice roll child stock. Sebab benda tu saya boleh tanya calculation. Dia akan tanya calculation. Alright? Tapi dalam uh, guess, ni adalah bahagian yang dia suka tanya untuk explain. Why the correction? What is the correction? Okay? Alright. Next, kita nak bergerak kepada liquid. Sangat senang, semua adalah... Explanation, semua adalah ayat, semua adalah benda yang kamu nak baca. So, bacalah. Kat sini kita takkan explain guna ayat, saya explain guna factor sahaja. Okay? So, three things that we are going to look at. The main thing, property of liquids, vaporization and condensation, vapor pressure and boiling point. Property of liquid, nak bergerak laju sahaja. I have classified them for you according to their factor. No definite shape and definite volume. Dia tak ada bentuk yang tetap, tapi dia akan ada volume yang tetap. Bermakna, kalau teacher ada satu botol 500 ml, over here, 500 milliliter, saya boleh tuang ke dalam mana-mana bekas, tetapi dia masih memegang 500 milliliter. Betul? Dua-dua ni akan menggunakan faktor intermolecular forces. Alright, dua-dua property ini akan guna faktor intermolecular forces. Sayang, dalam SPM kamu belajar property of liquid. Tapi kamu tak explain. So kat sini, soalan kalau keluar property of liquid, dia mesti minta explain. Dia tak pernah keluar soalan state the property of liquid. No, because you learn that in SPM. Over here, when the question come up, they will ask you, explain why liquid does not have a definite shape. Explain why liquid will have a definite volume but not a definite shape. Dia akan minta explain. Sebab tu saya kata saya ajar, saya nak ajar guna faktor sahaja. You need to know why they behave like that. So, dua-dua ni disebabkan intermolecular forces. Intermolecular forces for the definite shape, uh, for the no definite shape. Intermolecular forces in liquid particles is strong to hold them, to hold them together, all right, without diffuse. Okay, yang ni adalah untuk definite volume. Dia kuat untuk pegang diorang sekali. Sebab, sebab tu bila kita tuang air daripada satu botol ke dalam cawan, kamu beli air gas, kamu tuang ke dalam cawan, kamu tak nampak air tu bergerak keluar. Dia akan tuang ke dalam cawan. Kenapa dia akan tuang mengalir ke dalam cawan? Sebab daya tarikan antara all these gas particle is strong enough to hold them together. But why they won't have a definite shape? Because it's not strong enough, okay, 
strong enough to hold them in a fixed in a fixed position daya tarikan liquid kuat okey berbanding gas tetapi tak cukup kuat macam solid sebab tu bila kamu tuang dia ke dalam bekas yang berbeza bentuk dia akan mengambil bekas bentuk tersebut agree that this two will be based on your intermolecular forces okay yang ni strong enough to hold them together without diffuse this will explain the definite volume another part when we talk about not strong enough to hold them in a fixed position this one will explain the definite shape tapi yang pasti what i'm trying to show you both akan cerita pasal intermolecular forces and dua kat bawah the compressibility and also the diffusion dua kat bawah akan bincang pasal empty spaces between gas uh, sorry gas pula between liquid particles okay so talking about these empty spaces soalan saya syafinas empty spaces dalam liquid lagi banyak atau dalam gas lagi banyak Gas. Yes. Dalam gas. So talking about empty spaces. Uh, kalau berbanding dengan solid, liquid lagi banyak ke solid lagi banyak? Uh, ya. Yeah. Liquid. Liquid lagi banyak, betul. So empty spaces, gas adalah lebih tinggi berbanding liquid, lebih tinggi berbanding solid. Betul. Okay. So bila kita cerita compressibility, can liquid being compressed? Yes. Tapi soalan saya, Is liquid easier to compress compared to gas? Sharifah, kalau liquid dengan gas, siapa lagi senang untuk decompress? Gas. Gas. Gas compressibility will definitely be higher than liquid. Betul? Tapi adakah get liquid tak boleh dikompres? Boleh, kita boleh kompres liquid. Kita boleh tekan sebab still akan ada empty spaces. Boleh tekan tapi susah nak tekan. Okay. The same thing about diffuse. Diffuse adalah cerita macam kamu ada air kosong lepas tu kamu tuang sirap liquid juga. Ada air kosong liquid, ada sirap liquid. Sirap tu akan bergerak kamu nampak sirap tu akan masuk ke dalam air kosong kamu. Betul? Kenapa dia boleh masuk? Masih adalah cerita empty spaces. Alright. Talking about diffuse, compare your gas and your liquid. Your gas diffusion was still higher than your liquid. Mak kamu tengah masak kat dapur. Alright. Kamu bau lulu ke kamu nampak lulu? Mesti kamu bau lulu. Betul? Kenapa bau akan sampai lulu berbanding kamu nampak? Sebab gas diffuse faster. Betul? Why gas diffuse faster? Empty spaces. Ayat semua ada dalam nota. Yang saya nak tekankan kat sini, again, saya bukan nak tekankan ayat. Saya tak nak bagi ayat. Ayat tu baca sini. Saya nak tekankan the factor affecting the property. Then your life will be easier. Daripada hafal ayat, baik hang hafal faktor. Okay, ayat panjang sayang. Faktor tu logik je. Kenapa dia boleh ditekan? Sebab jarak antara gas particles atau liquid particles. Kenapa dia boleh diffuse? Sebab jarak empty spaces. Boleh? Okay. Sebab tu solid. Talking about solid a bit. Fikir logik. Solid boleh compress, boleh compress atau tak boleh Nadira? Nadira? Solid boleh compress ke tak boleh? Tak boleh, susah. Sebab jarak tak ada, betul? Nampak tak? Alright. Diffuse, sama juga. Solid, boleh diffuse. Susah. Sebab apa? Tak ada, tak ada space. Dia nak masuk antara solid tu, kita kena buat reaction dah sayang. Bukan tuang air sirap ke dalam air sahaja. Nampak? Okay. And the next, viscosity. Viscosity ni, if you know what it is, then your life will be easier. Resistant to flow. Alright. Resistant to flow. Soalan saya, Kristina. Kalau viscosity saya tinggi, if my viscosity is very high, Kristina, it means it's easy to flow or hard to flow. If viscosity is high? Yeah. Um, 
Susah. Susah. Kalau viscosity tinggi bermakna hard to flow. Okay. Itu maksud viscosity. Viscosity is the resistant to flow. Kalau viscosity sangat tinggi, bermakna benda tu sangat susah untuk dialirkan. Kamu pernah jumpa liquid. Saya nak bagi contoh yang sangat senang. Air, air gula yang pekat. Honey, pernah jumpa honey? Honey pekat dengan air kosong. Pernah tuang honey? Madu kamu? When you uh, when you decided to pour your honey, you can look at the flow of your honey. It's much slower compared to your water. Berbanding hang tuang air keluar, betul? Kenapa jadi macam tu? Because of viscosity. The viscosity in the honey is extremely high. Nampak? And what would be affecting the viscosity? Easy. Temperature. Pernah masak air gula? Raya, sebelum raya, malam raya. Betul? Nak masak air gula, nak buat air kan? Masa kamu masak air gula, nak masak air gula pekat. Masa kamu kacau atas dapur, temperature kamu tengah tinggi. Air gula kamu macam senang je mengalih, betul? Tapi bila kamu dah sejukkan dia, kamu letak dalam fridge. Esok pagi nak buat air raya pertama, betul? Okay? So, apa jadi pada air gula kamu? Air gula kamu jadi pekat. Betul? Padahal air gula yang sama dari semalam, right? Tak ubah apa pun. Cuma saya letak dia dalam fridge. Kenapa jadi macam tu? Temperature. When the temperature is high, We talk about uh, high temperature sebab saya dah letak high temperature. When the temperature is high guys, relate to kinetic energy. Forever. Uh, saya tak bagi ayat penuh again, saya bagi faktor je. Okay. When the temperature is high guys, kinetic energy is high. When the kinetic energy is high, you move faster. Semua partikel kamu move faster. Betul? And guys, of course, when you move faster, you flow easier. When you flow easier, what happen? Viscosity, viscosity is lower. So, what is the relationship between temperature and viscosity? Viscosity will be inversely proportional with temperature. I hope you can see that right now. Okay? Your viscosity is inversely Proportional with temperature. Okay. Temperature tinggi, viscosity rendah. Sebab apa? Sebab kinetic energy tinggi, benda tu akan bergerak laju. Bila benda gerak laju, benda tu akan mengalir laju lah. Partikel saya tengah bergerak laju, mengalir lah. Betul? So, viscosity akan jadi rendah. So, kamu kena ingat satu benda. Viscosity is the resistant to flow. So, the higher the viscosity means it's harder to flow. Yang ni yang kamu selalu terbalik. Okay. And the next factor affecting is actually your intermolecular forces. Kita guna intermolecular forces masih tinggi. Bila intermolecular forces tinggi, alright, particles will be closer to each other. Bila particle closer to each other, pergerakan akan jadi lambat. Move slow. Betul? Dan bila saya tarik dengan kuat, saya tarik kawan saya dengan kuat ni, tarik kuat gila. Kawan kamu nak mengalir, kamu duduk tarik dia. Alright, so apa jadi? Kita akan flow slower. Dan bila kamu mengalir dengan lambat, itu maksudnya viscosity kamu sangat tinggi. And you can see the relationship over here guys. Viscosity is high when the intermolecular forces is high. And in here, they are directly proportional. Nampak? Nampak bisa saya? Okay. And key point, key point yang Miss Wong bagi kat sini, sayang. All the key point that I give to you is the key point that you use in your sentence during your exam. Saya tak bagi ayat penuh. Tapi keyword, keyword ni adalah keyword yang kamu kena ada. Intermolecular forces will re, uh, lead to the particle is closer. Will lead to the particle move slower. Therefore, it will flow slower. Bila dia bergerak, bila dia mengalir dengan lambat, viscosity tinggi. Nampak? Boleh. Senang. Tu je. Property of liquid. Next. Property of liquid yang satu lagi, surface tension. Alright. I believe you play this before. 
Kamu akan nampak uh, your insects pernah duduk atas air. Saya tak tahu kamu biasa buat tak dulu. Saya biasa buat benda ni. Alright. Kenapa air kamu boleh ada satu droplet atas satu permukaan? Why your water can form a droplet? That is the question. Surface tension. Why surface tension exists? In your water, you have a lot of particles. You have two different types of particles. Particles that sitting in the water and the particles sitting on the surface of the particles. Like this. In the particles, orang dengan in the particles, dia akan ada daya tarikan dari semua arah. Sebab tu air kamu akan tertarik, air kamu takkan diffuse easily, air kamu akan ada definite volume. Sebab dia akan tertarik dengan orang dari semua arah. But what happens when the molecule that sitting on the surface? When you're sitting on the surface, kamu akan ada keadaan berat sebelah. Daya tarikan kamu hanya ke bawah kiri kanan. Tapi atas tak ada daya tarikan. Sebab apa? Saya duduk paling atas. Betul? Bila saya duduk paling atas dan saya tak ada daya tarikan ke atas ni, tak ada gas molecule, uh, particles ke atas, I don't have intermolecular forces on the top. I will have everything downwards. When you have everything downwards, your particle will be unbalanced. When it's unbalanced or imbalanced, it will then form an elastic flow. Sebab semua benda akan tend to tarik ke bawah. Semua benda akan tend to tarik ke bawah. Sebab tu dia jadi satu kawasan, satu permukaan yang ketat di, di atas. Sebab semua benda ditarik ke bawah. That's why you form a surface tension over here. This surface tension form because on the surface, the force of attraction, the intermolecular forces, is not balanced. Everything is towards downwards. Okay, when everything is in balance and towards downwards, you Kamu takkan ada surface tension. Surface tension only exists when your water is calm oh, and not moving. Yes, I know. Okay. All right. When your water is calm and not moving. Okay. I know. One second. So, ingat, syarat untuk surface tension yang saya nak ingatkan uh, kat sini is for the surface tension to happen, your water must be extremely calm. Alright? Water tak boleh bergerak. Particles in the water molecule tak boleh bergerak. Once the water is not calm, the water is moving, then the surface tension is gone. Okay? Boleh? Alright? Ingat yang tu, dia ada syarat-syarat dia. Uh, property of liquid yang dia su suka sangat minta kamu explain adalah viscosity and surface tension obviously. Sebab tu saya letak dia sebagai satu individual slide. So the rest of the property I think is quite easy for you. Okay. Crash tiba-tiba. Okay. And, 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 and. Kita nak sambung sikit. And. Iman nampak dah ke? Dah. Ke tak? Dah. Dah. Okay. So, ada dua benda yang saya nak tekankan kat viscosity, uh, kat surface tension. Yang lain kamu akan nampak dah. Ayat-ayat lain-lain tu kamu akan nampak the imbalance that I say and all that yang tu ada. Yang selalu budak akan tertinggal, this one. Kedua, temperature. What will be affecting the surface tension? Temperature. Kenapa temperature? Sebab bila temperature tinggi, kinetic energy tinggi sayang. Bila kinetic energy tinggi, particles kamu, uh, particles kamu akan bergerak. Particles kamu akan move faster. Dan bila partikel kamu move faster, kamu akan hilanglah the surface tension. 
tak ada orang akan duduk diam dah weh. Bila uh, uh, suhu kamu tinggi, bila kamu panaskan dia, kinetic energy semua orang tinggi, tak ada siapa akan duduk diam kat atas tu. Semua orang akan bergerak, betul? Bila semua orang akan bergerak, kamu takkan wujud your surface tension. Because saya nak benda tu tak bergerak. Nampak? Okay. So, what will be affecting the surface tension? Temperature. Alright. Reason, same thing. Kinetic energy move faster. So, dia akan start bergerak. Surface tension akan hilang kat situ. Alright. So, tak ada apa kat situ. That is the property of liquid. Okay. Alright. Five more minutes. Yang ni. Boleh. Yang ni sikit je. Okay. Ni sikit je. Condensation and vaporization. They are wise versa to each other. Ame. Vaporization is the changing from what to what. What face to what face? Yeah. Liquid and gas. Liquid to gas. Condensation? Condensation, Ami? Gas to liquid. Gas to liquid. Setuju? Okay. Pernah masak air nak masak lagi? Mana tahu tak pernah masak air. And then, kamu letak penutup pada periuk kamu. Alright, air mendidih kamu buka penutup tu. Penutup tu akan ada condensation ke atas. Betul? Talking one by one dulu. Vaporization. Kenapa boleh vaporize? Kenapa liquid boleh tukar jadi gas? Starting from that first. First and foremost, you need temperature. Or I would say, you need energy. Okay. Suhu dinaikkan, kamu panaskan dia atas api. So what happened when temperature increase or energy is provided? The molecule in the gas that is holding intermolecular forces Alright, the particles in your water holding intermolecular forces like this. What happened to them is the kinetic energy increase. The kinetic energy increase until one moment, the kinetic energy able to overcome ataupun is higher than the intermolecular forces. Kamu terikat tadi. Kamu ada daya tarikan tadi. So, saya panaskan kamu. Saya supply tenaga. Dan tenaga tu dalam bentuk kinetic energy. So, kamu akan start dari tadi duduk tenteram bergerak sikit-sikit. Sekarang kamu akan start bergerak laju. Sehingga satu moment kamu bergerak laju. Sampai tenaga yang kamu pegang boleh kuat daripada daya tarikan tersebut. So, kamu terlepas. Okay. When the kinetic energy able to overcome the intermolecular forces, what happened is your liquid particle will escape from the solution. Bila dia lepaskan diri dia daripada solution, sebab tu dia jadi wap air yang duduk ke atas. Saya nak tengok arrow yang ke atas terlebih dahulu. Arrow semua yang warna kuning. So this is the gas particle yang terlepas duduk ke atas. Betul? Okay. So, bila dia terlepas duduk ke atas, kita nak masuk kepada condensation. Sekarang saya dah buat vaporization, saya dah tunjuk liquid saya jadi gas. Kenapa liquid saya jadi gas? Sebab tenaga saya diberi, kinetic energy saya tinggi, saya boleh overcome daya tarikan saya, saya lepaskan diri saya lah. So, next thing. Why condensation? Before condensation guys, I want you to remember one thing. Condensation hanya berlaku dengan syarat Close system. Ataupun bahasa kamu, close container. Okay. Kenapa close container? Sayang, dia kena ada, weh, pernah tak hal masak air kalau tak ada penutup? Tak ada penutup, ada tak condensation? Tak ada buat air yang terlepas lah. Betul. Alright. So, kenapa ada condensation? Uh, Fikir-fikirkan kenapa kita kena ada close container. Next week, you tell me. Because time, uh, saya salah ajar sikit tadi. So, our time is restricted. And it crashed a bit just now. So, uh, your attendance, we will continue this one next week with solid. And also, uh, solid mungkin saya tak bincang. Sebab senang. Kamu kena baca je solid. Saya mungkin nak bincang face diagram je. Okay, next week.
So ada soalan dalam tu yang saya tak ajar lagi Cuba jawab Satu je soalan Pasal boiling point and vapor pressure If you are prepared then you should know Try that Okay We will continue this next week Sorry Sebab boiling point vapor pressure sangat penting Saya nak bincang ni Okay Alright, uh, pesan kat kawan-kawan kamu yang tak masuk Hari Sabtu saya akan bagi link Google Form Untuk diorang jawab kuis Alright, off you go. Thank you and have a good day, class. Thank you, madam. Thank you, madam. Thank you, madam. Thank you, madam. Thank you, miss. Thank you, miss. Thank you, madam. Yang ada soalan ke apa? Thank you.